In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. In the days of the fasting for St. Mary, <coughs> we um, meditate on many of her virtues and the names uh, and the titles that were given to her by our church fathers. One of the titles or the names was the bride. She is the bride or she is the second heaven. <clears throat> and one of the psalms that we, uh, we pray in the um, third hour, Psalm number 45, speaks a lot about the relationship between the bride and the bridegroom. Um, it is the one that we read, at your right hand stands the queen in gold. Listen, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people also and your father's house. So the king will greatly desire your beauty. And this is also the part where, uh, that we say to the bride and, 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 and the wedding as of that the church is, is delivering the bride into the groom's hand. Because he is your Lord, worship him. The royal daughter is all glorious within the palace. Her clothing is woven with gold. She shall be brought to the king in robes of many colors. The virgins, her the companions who follow her, shall be brought to you with gladness and rejoicing. They shall be brought, they shall enter the king's palace. This psalm speaks about two relationships. The relationship between uh, God and St. Mary, as I said that at, at your right hand stands the queen dressed in gold, and this is why in, in every Orthodox church you will find the icon of St. Mary always on the, on the right hand of um, Christ, and also speaks about the relationship between God and the church. So the bride can be St. Mary, can be yourself, your soul, and can be the church as a whole. And this is um, the unique relationship between God and you. God takes us very seriously. This psalm was mainly written as um, a poem um, to a king in on his wedding day. Some of the commentators say that. But most of the commentaries ag agreed that it was a messianic psalm, um, a prophecy about Christ, Christ Church, and about the unique relationship between God and St. Mary, the Virgin Mother of God. He said that Listen, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people also and your father's house. So the king will greatly desire your beauty. And if you look at any relationship, any marital relationship or um, any serious relationship, it's very hard to have other relationships with it. And that's why when God um, chose St. Mary and sent her the angel Gabriel, um, he told her that you are full of grace. Peace to you or hail to you full of grace. And he gave her her great calling. He gave her the great news that she will bear Christ. She will be the mother of God. But there is a price. She will have to forget her father's house. She will have to deal with the disapproval of the people around her. How come a virgin bears a child without a husband? She might deal with shame and social ridicule. And even Joseph, he thought about um, letting her go because he couldn't handle the shame of having his fiancée 
uh, um, uh, being pregnant, of course, before uh, the angel Gabriel appeared to him. So she basically had to forget the approval of the people. She had to, to for, for forget the society that she was living in, and she had to just to listen to the unique and only calling of God, is that the king has desired your beauty. But what about us? How about our own relationship with God? God wants me to also forget my father's house. God wants me to forget the, the customs of the society that take me away from him because God is desiring me. God paid his blood as a price for me because he desired my beauty. And as any uh, bridegroom um, picks up the ring for his bride and uh, uh, puts his, his effort and his creativity and his big money into this ring as a symbol of love, as a symbol of this unique um, commitment, also God did the same because God looks at his relationship with, with us as, as a, in a marriage relationship. Many times, God in the Old Testament, when he speaks about how the people left him, he said that uh, the people left me and committed adultery. Why? Because in his view, he, he views me, he views us, as his bride. And whenever we go away from that relationship, we are committing adultery. The king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him. The royal daughter is all glorious within the palace. And this is what we need to talk about a little bit. As in like any wedding, the bride puts her adornment, puts her makeup, puts her wedding dress, and she appears in her best form in that wedding day. Because this is the day that she will get married to her um, husband. And every day we come here to church, every time we worship, how are we getting prepared? How do we get ready? The glory of the daughter is within the palace. How much investment we put into having the palace or the house of God or your soul be in its in glorious shape, in its best shape to worship your bridegroom. We focus many times on what we do from the outside, how we dress up, when we stand, when we sit down, what to do. But we sometimes forget that our God is seeking our inner beauty from inside. He is seeking that beauty, and he is demanding that beauty. And that beauty comes by being devoted to him, by being in prayer, getting ready and, and preparing myself before the communion, we, we sometimes forget this uh, many lessons that we took on Sunday when we were kids, that on the night before communion, you sit with yourself, you come down, you pray, you repent from your sins, and you get ready for that glorious moment. That's why the glory of the daughter is within the palace. Another metaphor that we see in the Bible about the relationship between the bride and the groom in Revelation chapter 21. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, 
and prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is the new Jerusalem. This is when this world ends and the second coming uh, occurs and there is nothing we know. There is no land, no sea, and no earth from what we know, but it's a new earth, a new city. And the holy city, Jerusalem, will be coming as a bride to her bridegroom. And this city is you and me. How do you view yourself in your relationship with God? Do you view yourself as a slave, as a creative person uh, whom is commanded by God to do certain things? Or do you view yourself as a precious bride whom the groom paid for a precious price, which is blood? How is your commitment level with God? Are you committed with God as you are committed to your husband or, or to your wife? This is the kind of relationship God is seeking. Also in Ezekiel, when I passed in um, chapter 16, when I passed by you again and looked upon you, indeed your time was the time of love. God is speaking to you. Your time was the time of love, so I spread my wing over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you. God made an oath to you and entered into a covenant with each one here that you become mine, says the Lord God. God is viewing you and he is telling you, you are mine. Can you tell God that you are his also? God passes by us now and he says that it is your time, it is the time of love. God does not judge you now as much as he, he offers constant and steady flow of love because he wants you back. Also in uh, Revelation chapter 19, and I will, I will end by this, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage, listen, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his wife, us, you, me, your human soul, his, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her and to you, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said, These are the true sayings of God. We are all called to this marriage supper of the Lamb, which is the heavenly meal, the heavenly communion that we are about to partake from now. So this is our relationship with God. It's, it's, it's a marriage relationship, and everybody is called to it. Everybody here is the bride of Christ, and we form the church, which is the bride of Christ. So how are you, how are you getting ready for that marriage? On Sunday, and on every day, and on the ultimate wedding day, where we all go and be one with our bridegroom when we leave this earth. How are we getting ready? See, how much is the honor and the privilege and the blessing? We are not just people created to follow divine commandments. We are not slaves. We are not robots. We are the bride of the groom. This is how God sees you every time. He's saying, you are my beloved, you are mine. And the unique re relationship between God and his mother, St. Mary, is the, is the ultimate model that we see where God unites with the human person, with the human being, 
and Christ is incarnate in that person. And the image of Christ is imprinted on that person. Of course, there is a, a unique a relationship for the purpose of the incarnation as, a, as an act of, of salvation, but also on, on our level, God is choosing you to be born out of you, to have his image imprinted on you, because you were created to be his image and on his likeness. So every time you surrender, every time you accept Christ in your heart, every time you see yourself as this bride, the image of Christ is imprinted more and more in you. And in this world, we become small examples or many examples of Christ walking on earth. Of Christ walking on earth. I remember I read uh, like one time, and it's like very famous, saying that uh, they like asked Gandhi uh, why he uh, wasn't Christian. And he said that uh, uh, he would have become Christian except for the Christians. <laughs> we are not walking according to the standards. We are not walking according to this commitment between us and God. And this is how we see the unique relationship between God and the human soul. When you surrender, when you submit yourself to God in love, because our time is the time of love. And God is telling you, you are mine. He's extending his hands. What is your response? What is your response? Would you tell him, well, I will take you, but uh, I will keep other relationships with you? Well, we just heard in the psalm, he's saying to the bride, forget your your people and your, and your father's house. Why? Because the king, not anyone, the king desires your beauty. How we get prepared? We just heard in the epistle, uh, in the first epistle of St. Peter, that he's, he's telling us, finally, all of you be of one mind, have a compassion for one another. This is how Christians show their love and, and their commitment having compassion for one another, love as brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous. And not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this. We are called to be his bride. And the bride is, 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 is uh, wearing linen of gold. We are called to this that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, his lips from speaking guile. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek um, peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord on the righteous, the eyes of the Lord on you, he's expecting you to live according to that calling to this high calling. When you, when you go to work, when you go to school, and I know that school is about to begin in two weeks and many of you will be embarking on a new life in a different territory. So what is your plan? Are you going to be the bride of Christ where everybody will know that you, your light is shining or you just conform to the standards and the norms of the environment around you. And hey, this is college. We can have many reasons, we, we, we can have many justifications and excuses not to live according to the standard of our king. But this very own thing, that w this is what will make you stand out. This is this what will make your light shine to everyone around you. So it is my choice whether I live and act and continue living in total devotion to my bridegroom 
because I am called to this royal wedding every time, or I'm going to forsake, not my people, but I'm going to forsake God, and I'm going to conform to whatever my people, my society, and my culture are asking me to do. We have to make a decision. Are you going to be a slave, or are you going to be a royal queen or a bride married to, to a royal king? To him all glory forever. Amen.